Hello everyone and welcome back to making an XB70 Valkyrie in Blender for a physics-based game like Kerbal Space Program. I want to emphasize that I am nowhere near competent enough in Blender uh, to tell you how to make them for professional renders like images and such. That's a long ways down and I suggest looking at some of the other channels like Blender Guru or something like that uh, for the image renders. But there is a difference in the way that things are made for games, if you really want to get good frame rates at least. Uh, and I mean, of course, certain games can be very well optimized and such. Kerbal Space Program, uh, it's best to keep things a little bit simple, especially if you're using the plugins like Ferrum Aerospace and you want to use the model as the physics-based thing, the, the one that aerodynamics is going to be calculated on. So I'm consciously trying to minimize the number of faces and stuff like that. So you notice I, I don't use subdivision surfaces or stuff that might add polygons when I don't need them uh, just to make things look good. Of course, in the case of the XB70, the, it doesn't really need too much of that anyway, thankfully. But uh, yeah, so just a warning about the particular style that this is going for. Um, I noticed that this, uh, we're going to be working on the canopy later on, but I actually wanted to do a few modifications on the body here. And we can see there is a little bit of a discrepancy, isn't there? But let's um, go ahead and drag those up and see if we can fix that. Does that look better? Yeah, that looks better. And in particular, looking at images, it seems like the top of this is much flatter. And then we have here, it is rounded. This was rounded not because that's dictated by the images that we're using as references, but because we started off with a cylinder, right? That's the cylinder shape. If you have different shaped bodies, like, you know, uh, taller ones like airliners, well, uh, the front view will help with that. But really, the front view is not going to help too much with figuring out the slope of the top of this. You really need other reference images from different angles to help gauge whether you've got the sense of things right. And I don't right now. I think uh, we need to uh, grab some of these points here, like uh, these along this line, and just try and flatten out the top of this because it's got a fairly flat top. That's getting there. The back of it is already pretty flat. You can see it's sort of flat back there, but it shouldn't be as cylindrical as it is right now up here. Again, I'm just eyeballing it and it's not going to be perfect here. Okay, so let's get on with the canards. Get out of edit mode, otherwise it'll add them to this mesh. And we'll start off in side view. I want to bring the 3D cursor over here so that we spawn the cube right here. So shift right click for that and it should attach itself to the mesh and I want to spawn a cube because we're doing sharp edges on these control surfaces. If it is a slower plane, you will want to do round edges. We see that the thickness around here is that much. I don't think there's any dihedral to speak of. So that's about the central thickness of this. And we want to, well, we can do the other sizing from the top view, keypad five and keypad 7, and let's drag this over. Now, the top of this is sort of obscuring the fact that the canard goes a little bit into it. So we'll start it there, and then a tab to get into edit mode, deselect with Alt-A, select the edges with C, uh, tweak this out to the outside here, SY to size it down, Alt A and then I've got the screencast keys on, I think. Do I? No, it seems to go off every time I start recording. Okay, or every time I start the program. Okay. So again, SY. I think this dialog is actually maybe blocking things. Okay, and we want a loop cut right where this line is. You see that line there? I'll get this over here and then Alt A and circle select that one, move those over. And we have it like this now. Okay, uh, it seems awful thick to me and maybe 
maybe the original image is being mm, optimistic. I don't know. Uh, but I feel like this is probably a little bit thinner. The leaning edge definitely is thinner, and we can sort of tweak that now. And S, Z, and down. Make that a very sharp edge. The back edge will also be sharp, but that's going to be dealt with by the, um, the control surface that we're going to add in game. I don't think I need that. Okay, S, Z. And then just get that down there. All right, Z6. So that's what it looks like. Doesn't look too bad. Um, again, uh, the top view was sort of obscuring the fact that these go very close to the body. Let's fix this. But I'm ultimately going to have this be its own separate part, I think, and the wings as well. And that's because it doesn't seem like it's a good idea to. Oops, Z4. To have the wings be the same part. All attached. The aerodynamics won't get calculated right. But there's a reason why I didn't join all these together, like as in one mesh. And that's because I intend to separate these parts and make them individual parts in the game rather than make them one part. There'll be a body with the air intakes. And then there's going to be a left wing, right wing, uh, left canard, right canard, and then the vertical stabilizers. And then that should take care of it. Okay, we've got that. We're going to want to mirror it. And we want to mirror it across the body. And that looks fine. Okay, let's do the vertical stabilizer then. There's some shimmering here that makes me worry that there's more those than there ought to be. But anyway, um, yeah, Z4, tab, Alt C, okay, Alt A and then C, sizing in the Y direction, make it bigger, slide it over. Okay, and then I want to loop cut. There's a few, hold on, actually, that the front edge doesn't seem to be meeting up right. Let's get that there. Uh, there's a sharp edge right here and then another one here. You can see from the image, loop cut mode. You could use Control R for loop cuts. And then let's move the bottom end of that cut over to that line. And then this one over to this one. Okay. And obviously this is too big. Select all, shift it over to this point. And S, X. I feel like there needs to be a loop cut down the center here. Like that. And this one and that one and that one on the front. S, Z. To squeeze those in. Did I say S, Z before? S, X. My mistake. And let me just verify the top. Uh, well, it seems to taper quite a lot. So, I think once again, the image that we're using is a bit over extreme in the thickness. SX. I'm going to go with this. Z6 to C. In full, that seems fine. And once again, we can mirror it here. However, we only need to produce one of these for the final, uh, as a part, because they're exact duplicates and symmetry should work fine in this case. Okay. Interesting subtle difference between not selecting body and selecting body, but anyway, they are placed properly. Right. Seems that way. Okay. So there is this bottom bit here that I didn't cover before that's sort of a, a fairing for the landing gear as far as I could tell. And there's actually a gap in the back of it, so it probably has some function related to the air intake as well. But um, we need to take a look. If we take a look at the bottom view, uh, this sort of rendering of the air intake does not seem to fit what things are. Um, it is a straight intake. It doesn't have this edge here. 
what this bottom thing is showing is is that bottom fairing I think so it's sort of like a very sharp thing like that object mode add mesh cube these guys seem to be all the way up front oh we need a split here a loop cut Let's get that point down. Get this point down. This point up. And you'll see there's sort of a curved slope here, so we'll need another loop cut here ish where that slope changes. And we'll bring that down here. Okay, but the profile is not right, in fact, and the location is not right. Uh, we want to center this in the x-axis. Well, that's its local. I want global, x-axis, zero. So the front ones, we're going to bring together SX. Get them nice, uh, careful. SX, get them very sharp down there. Let me take a look at some photos to see what it really looks like, because I don't think this blueprint is doing it justice. Yeah, it's, it's basically like this. If I really wanted to add some detail, I think beveling would be a good idea. And we can use a be the bevel modifier if we want to do that. Um, 0.05 and 2. I, I just don't feel happy about this sharp edge. Actually, 0.1 might be. Okay, that's actually too much. I don't actually want beveling on the top edge or this edge here. Ah, I guess I'll just go with the edge split. Okay, so in order to make sure it's not beveling this back end, I'm going to do edge split. And actually, that's more important on the top because top is hidden by the body anyway. We don't need to bevel that. We just want to bevel the bottom part. Uh, I'm going to skip the front bit. Edge, edge split. Okay, so we won't have extra polygons at the top. Okay. And actually, uh, for reasons I'm not entirely clear about, the back end of this seems inset and maybe related to the intake somehow. But I to inset and I scaled Z to uh, get it a little bit more boxy. I don't know why inset has been a little bit finicky lately it only seems to want to do one axis if you guys have any idea please tell me uh whoa okay the beveling okay so i want to edge split this and then can i do it that way no let me do that later then e gonna inset that and edge split Okay, now it's not going to do extra polygons in there. Okay, uh, that, that's more or less what I see it as. All right, I just want to add some antennae, and then we're going to work on the uh, windshield. So obviously we have one thing here. So object, well, in this case, it might be good to just do it in edit mode if we are on the body. So we need to go object mode, body. We're going to add this directly to the body. So instead of making it its own separate um, mesh here, it's going to be part of this mesh. So add, uh, we're going to have to add a collider that's different from this body anyway, because there's definitely a, um, a surface here that the colliders will not like. It has to be a con convex collider. This is a concave bit. So anyway. We'll deal with that when we get to it. Um, once again, uh, shift, right click, and add. I'm still going to use a cube for this. And we're going to keep this one really simple. Okay, and then the top view. I, I don't even know if the top view has it on here. No, I want all the things. Oh, right. This is where having it 
be the same mesh can get complicated because when you select all the things, you gotta select the body as well. No, Alt A, and we want to select this bit and size in the X. Doesn't seem like this view has that part on it, and it's just like that. And we could actually add one little detail. We'll add a few more vertices in order to give it some dimensionality. Uh, no, I don't want to be in loop cut mode. Okay, selecting those, SX to taper those in, and then taper the back ones as well. Let's just grab this and bring it down to the bottom one. So to duplicate this little thing here, we're gonna do Shift D, and now I've got another one. Well, okay, uh, that's complicated. So we actually are mirroring mirroring the body so we've got a bit of a complication here so we're going to split it down in half because if we're going to be mirroring it we're going to be mirroring it so now it's split and then deselect alt a circle select all the stuff on this side keep selecting things that i don't mean to select okay just this stuff please delete vertices um so solid is there anything suspicious? Not really. Okay, so I don't want all of it. I just want this little, these little points. Yes. Okay, now Shift D, and I want to rotate it. Rotate the copy. Well, that's because we're not in the outside view. Well, we can see the rotation here. I want 180. And then we're going to need to tweak that. This is probably a bad way of doing it. <laughs> I'm having second thoughts. We'll eventually get to merge the point when we do the mirror. Remember, you can there's a merge limit here. So there are duplicate points here, here, and such, but those will be merged when we finally do the mirror, uh, apply the mirroring. Uh, move that down to the bottom. Look at the side view and bring that over here i'm not adding the pitot tubes this time uh, those are on the side they're made by a similar process anyway so it'd be exactly what you see here these might have little bits hanging out here i'm not adding that detail this one also seems to have something behind it uh let's make sure that everything is fine solid solid Things are mirrored properly. Okay, that's fine. I, and it's good for those to be part of the body. What? Oh, yeah, I had made that cut there. This doesn't look so good, does it? This feels like something's missing. Let's do the cockpit view. So we're, we are in body and we want to go in wireframe and see what the top looks like here. So we're going to use the knife tool. And I'm going to just click a point there and make make my marks. Yeah, I'll keep it simple and go like that. That line's already there. Go from this point directly across to out there. That's a triangle. I guess we'll accept that. And then this, we'll make an extra point here. Make them four-sided figures or more. Could uh, could use inset on this part and for this window as well. So I'm gonna cancel that. Um, we've got a brace here. Let's go with another brace here and go from this and follow that bottom line outside the window. Okay, and I'm gonna shift. You see how this line here is not quite following that line on the image. And really that's true all the way. I would like to shift that over. Right, that one, that one, that one, this one, and this one. So those as a group 
we need to inset Oh, hold on. Uh, median point, bounding box center, maybe. Inset. Yeah, me and inset are not going, getting on very well these days. Okay, let me take a look at what this looks like here. We don't really need those, but it's not a problem. We can see the outline of that window, that's good. And if we take a look, it seems to be following what it says there. So I'm going to mark a seam here now. I'm going to select these edges and indicate that I will be wanting to deal with them as a separate thing. When, we, when it comes time to apply textures. So we'll apply a different texture to that. We can also, uh, well, first of all, there's a slope issue here, isn't there? All of these points need to go up. We need a flat plane of glass. These shouldn't be so far down. Okay. And now uh, this bit here, I think I'll, instead of insetting, I'll just draw those lines in. Okay, that is the seam I want. And so I'm going to say edge, mark seam. And that's window number two, as far as I could tell. Okay, and then the side windows. We already have them outlined. We just need to select the edges and mark it. Now, if you want to be fancy, you could like extrude them in a little bit. Otherwise, if we want to do other seams, the main seam will be down the middle. And that's because if we have lettering like US Air Force on the side of this, US Air Force would probably be the most likely thing to be on the side of it. Um, the lettering won't look right on the opposite side if we uh, simply have the texture mirrored. A lot of times you can just uh, keep the mirroring and apply the texture like that if there's no lettering, but if you have lettering, you gonna have to do the left side and right side separately. And so we want a seam there. Uh, when it comes time to apply the mirror, we have to apply the mirror in order to split up the texture. So I'm going to do that right now. Um, let's just uh, alt select that line. That seems to be going all the way around except for those little bits that we added later. It's very good. I'm going to mark another seam like that. The seams are to make texturing easier and more straightforward. When you texture stuff, you don't want to have the textures getting stretched. Like if you're trying to render the globe on a flat surface, you know, you have to sort of cut it up, you know, like the orange peel way of doing it. Otherwise, you're going to be distorting areas. We want to distort areas as little as possible. Otherwise, the texture is not going to look right. So that's what the seams are for, to cut it up in ways that we can uh, maintain the maintain area, basically. It's not unlike the way clothing patterns are done, to be honest. That's another way of looking at it. Okay, well, I think I've got all the details that I actually want on the model. Uh, the colliders are another thing. We can make the colliders fairly basic, especially since I plan to apply the aerodynamics directly to this model. And so just as an example example of how to make a collider, let me get out of this view. Object mode. Oh, uh, let's get let's give some of these cubes a name um, before they get too cumbersome. So vertical stabilizer. Okay, so collider. Uh, let's start from the front. Add a cylinder. Uh, the horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizers are shaped in a way that would allow them to be their own colliders. We don't need to do that. Um, these, this needs to be rotated like this, 90 degrees exactly. And we are going to start off at the center and make sure it is centered here and size it up. 
we don't need to have it be flat on top like the model is. Um, we're just going to keep it a simple cylinder. In fact, it doesn't need this many sides, but we're, it will. we need to SY it. And this front, I'm going to extrude. And make that just small and point down. Um, let's hide the body for a sec. Uh, this front point can't go lower than this, otherwise it starts becoming a concave point. So got to watch out. Okay, I've shaped the collider like this for now. And what you see is it's sort of floating above this portion that happens to be concave right there. We can't just make it follow that because then it'd be concave and not a suitable collider for Kerbal Space Program. And we could reduce the diameter of this here, but it still wouldn't follow it great. We can try that. Um, so, but that would complicate the collider just a little bit, but meaning we're going to add a loop cut here and then we're going to select that edge loop and shrink it down and we can bring it down as long as this bottom point does not go lower and bob point down there which would create a concavity so uh, just to get rid of the body you can see this so we can actually select this bottom point and see its z axis location or maybe this one's lower okay now it's in a safe location and but how is it following the body still not great Again, this means that if you attach some RCS thruster, it'd float above this, but it's not horrible either. Uh, the reason why this sloped like this is so that the crew has some visibility. It is aerodynamically or functionally the collider is, doesn't need to follow that. But uh, it is up to you how complex you want the collider to get. And SZ, I'm going to shrink it like this. And my hope is that that is a nice, simple, concave collider to go along with this. And we want a separate collider for this engine block part. So, and then if we want to attach something to the engine block part uh, or uh, the back of the body, it'll just fall along with that at that point. Okay, I'm just going to take that as the collider for the body there. And so this is going to be collider body one and I'm going to parent it to the body so it keeps moving along with the body um, we need to do that in object mode though so shift select control P keep transform I want to apply the scale control a apply the scale of the collider okay so now it's all set we can hide it Now I just want a collider for the air intake area. We want it centered in X and it's going to be the whole length. Um, you know, the engines probably, we want them to attack, uh, we'll have it like that. I think that's a good length for it. And that's probably a good place for it right there. Seems right. Top view. Well, we need to get some things out of the way so we can see what's happening. Let's uh, get rid of the body. Let's get rid of the wings. Just hide them. And we can get rid of the engine to sell for now because we're going to... Well, no, let's keep that. The image on the top side doesn't show it very well, not like the bottom side did. I think I'm going to have a center line cut like so. This would be a good th thing to mirror, but we don't need to. Z4, we just need to remember to select the points on both sides. Okay, mm and I want to move those back here. 
and SX to expand them out. Select the back pair. SX to expand those out to meet the edges of the engine nacelles. And we want another loop cut right. Well, that's not exactly how I wanted to loop cut, but it's okay. Right there, select those two, SX, move that out. And that's close enough for a collider. Okay, so that'll be our collider around that block. So, uh, collider nacelle. I just call them collider first, just to remind myself. And then object, uh, shift, select, control, P, key transform. Now, let's see what else do we need colliders for. Again, the vertical stabilizer and the canards up front seem to be okay on their own. And I think the outer wing surfaces are as well. I will uh, I think the inner wing surface with this little edge here it isn't really. But rather than make a new object, I'm going to actually select the wing. I'm going to deselect these problematic bits at the edge here. Shift C to deselect that. I'm going to and it might be a curvature issue though. We'll see in Unity. So I'm going to Shift D duplicate. Duplicate. I'm going to press P. Oop. I accidentally press something else. P. Selection. And now it's a separate little wing part here. And I'm going to just call that Collider Wing Left. And I'm once again going to parent it to Wing Left. I mean, uh, in object mode, make wing left its parent. Okay, uh, of, course, of course they're going to be following very closely to each other. We'll see whether it makes a suitable collider or not. And I'm going to do the same thing with wing right. So that means that uh, the tail portion here, the last, these, these polygons, these faces will not collide with anything. Executive decision, we could then select those faces after I do this bunch and make them a separate collider if we thought that they, that functionality was very necessary for people to be able to attach things to that part or for that part to collide with something. If we were only doing aerodynamics on the collider, then we would certainly want to make sure that that's represented. We are now ready for texturing.